You're listening to the Fort Erie Podcast, your local source for upcoming events, hot new listings, and bite-sized interviews with business and community leaders. Here's your host, Brent Jones. Hey there, Fort Erie. Welcome to Season 3, Episode 1 of the Fort Erie Podcast, the Season 3 premiere episode. I'm your host, Brent Jones, and today it is Tuesday, October 13th, 2020. Hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving with your family. And I gotta be honest, it feels like a long time now since we've had a new episode of the podcast. Uh, Season two ended back in May. Season three, of course, is kicking off right now in October. And to get the season started, joining me today will be my guest, Sheldon Halliday of Shaggy's Pizza in Stevensville. So let's get right into the meat and potatoes of this episode. Let's start with some local news headlines. Uh, First and foremost, Fort Erie Council has rejected a proposal to build on Garrison Road, specifically uh, storage units. So a request to have the site in question on Garrison Road rezoned for the purposes of building a storage facility were unanimously rejected uh, by Fort Erie Town Councilors, uh, citing another similar facility project already in the planning process, as well as a requirement for the land in question, 3.7 hectares to be exact, to produce at least 185 jobs in order to remain consistent with the province's growth policies. Now, as always, for more details on this story or anything else we talk about today, please check out the show notes below this episode, or um, you can even access those show notes just by visiting thefortieriepodcast.com. Next story, Fort Erie is looking uh, to start budget deliberations next month. The 2021 budget season is looking at a base budget increase of 3.9%. Uh, to just over $29 million, and a water wastewater budget hike of 2.9% to just shy of $20 million. So proposed dates for these deliberations include November 18th for the capital budget, uh, December 9th for the water wastewater budget, and February 3rd for the library and general operating budgets. All of these budget meetings will be streamed live on the town's YouTube channel, and all meetings will begin at 6 p.m. Now, I've got a hot new listing for you this week. Let me give you a quick disclaimer first. As many of you know, uh, the real estate market right now, uh, a little bit low on inventory. Uh, Properties are selling fast, historically fast for Fort Erie. So I apologize. By the time you listen to this episode, my hot new listing for the week might already be gone. But uh, as of right now, today's hot new listing comes courtesy of Ray Rosatani with Remax Niagara Realty Limited. I'm talking about 669 Central Avenue in Fort Erie, listed for 425000 This well-maintained three-bedroom, two-bathroom character home is priced to sell and features 1,700 square feet of living space. Uh, be sure to check out the link in the show notes below or contact me directly for details. Uh, Let's jump over to Fort Erie Questions and Answers, of course, taken from the Fort Erie Questions and Answers Facebook group. Elizabeth asks, where is the best place to get a secondhand baby gate? Now, there were quite a few answers, but the most popular one that I saw was Rose Hill Auction. Cheryl asks, do you think it's safe to go ahead with Halloween this year? Now, look, there were a mix of answers. Some people disagreed with other people, but here was my takeaway. It sounds like quite a lot of homes in Greater Fort Erie are going to be doing some type of candy handout uh, this Halloween, maybe just taking some extra precautions with gloves and masks. Uh, If you're the parent of a child who wishes to go trick-or-treating this year, it doesn't sound like it's going to be a total bust. It does sound like there will be some people participating, but with uh, a few extra precautions in place. Then Maureen asks, is there any place to buy individual coffee pods in Fort Erie? The best and most common answer in the comments was Bulk Barn on Garrison Road. You can buy individual coffee pods there. All right, I think that concludes what's new and happening. Now, folks, it's time for my interview with Sheldon Halliday. I am here with Sheldon Halliday, better known as Shaggy from Shaggy's Pizza and Eats in Stevensville. Welcome to the show. Should I call you Shaggy or? Yeah, you can go with Shaggy. Go with Shaggy? Yeah, for sure. Thanks for coming in. How did Sheldon become Shaggy? Uh, I was about almost 30 years ago and I uh, I was uh, hanging out with some of my buddies and they kind of gave me the name. I had a little bit longer of, uh, I'm a ginger and a little bit longer of a hair and uh, I kind of resembled a cartoon character. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that's fair enough. Let me start by asking you the same question I ask all my guests, which is what makes Fort Erie and Stevensville specifically such a great place to live and work? 
Um, I personally love it because I, I, I'm a small town kind of guy. I, I, I don't know, the big city is always nice to visit, but small town is always great to live in. Uh, the people around here are awesome, friendly. I, I, I don't know, I have, I have a great time. I've lived here most of my life and, uh, and love it for sure. Well, that's great. And I really appreciate you making some time to chat with me today. Um, I kind of wanted to start this chat by kind of addressing the elephant in the room. How has COVID-19 impacted your business this year? So COVID, uh, it's a little tricky just uh, with uh, people coming in and stuff. Uh, uh, we are all takeout, so nobody really eats here. Uh, over the summertime, we had two tables out front for as a, uh, acting as a patio. Uh, we do that uh, every year. It's a regular thing for us. But uh, it, it, we didn't do anything. Uh, we didn't have to really uh, restructure too much. Uh, we just had to follow by all the rules and stuff, and uh, and uh, people just come and go as they, uh, I leave my front door open, you don't have to touch nothing, come on in. We uh, we just keep good on the sanitizing and, and all that good stuff. But uh, When did Shaggy's first open, and like how did that come about? Did you always know you wanted to be in the restaurant business? or? So I've been in the restaurant business for like uh, about 25 years now. Uh, I've been in a manager position for probably 15 of them anyway and I uh, and I just love it it's just different scenario every day it's I uh, meet all kinds of great people and I uh, and uh, the whole shaggy thing I uh, I uh, didn't really come to light until uh, a few years ago I uh, I'm uh, gonna celebrate my third uh, uh, third anniversary this year and uh, and it's been great and uh, before that I had no idea about starting a business or didn't know that I wanted to start a business I I uh, I just uh, kind of stumbled upon it and I thought it was a great idea maybe uh, to help my uh, my little family out and uh, make a little bit of a living for them that's very cool what are, what are some of the most popular items on the menu okay so other than pizza and wings uh, we do uh, also like hoagies uh, tacos are huge and people love our tacos uh, we, we just started doing fried chicken so we've been getting a little bit of buzz on fried chicken lately um, yeah, we do. Uh, we're all over the place. I, I, we do a little bit of salads, and I, I, what else do we have? We have some like in the eats category, like fingers and fries, and our poutines are rather large. Actually, poutines are probably one of our uh, our draw, I guess, if you would say. Uh, a lot of people come in for that kind of thing. They're enormous, and it's nap time after you're done eating. <laughs> <laughs> well, you and your wife Kelly operate this business together, uh, yes. predominantly, right? Yeah. Would you describe Shaggy's then as a, as a family business? Oh, totally, hundred percent. Yeah, my wife is. I, uh, uh, as much as she doesn't really work around the, the business too much you might see her here and there uh, uh, running the till for me or whatever but uh, she has her own little job and uh, and she uh, takes care of all my paperwork behind the scene which which is almost a full-time job on herself and, uh, plus yeah. plus all her she actually goes to school and she's she's great she's like superwoman there yeah for sure <laughs> well that's very cool yeah. well i think uh, i know your wife listens to the podcast regularly and i think she might have prepped you that we're about to enter the rapid fire question round here so all right nothing to panic you but just some fun little <laughs> trivia questions about yourself so people can get to know you a little bit better um i'll rattle them off and first thing that pops in your head just blurt it out done and done. sound good yep. okay here we go would you rather be invisible or be able to read minds I go with three minds. Okay. If you could be an animal, which one would you choose? A uh, lion. That's a good choice, actually. <laughs> if you could suddenly have 25 hours in a day, what would you do with that extra hour? Sleep one extra hour. That would be awesome. <laughs> if you were suddenly handed a million dollars, what would you buy first? Uh... I'm pretty humbled, so I would I would probably uh, I'm a saver. I pack I, I would pack that thing away probably and uh, and try to make some money with it. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you could change places with anyone in the world for a day, who would it be? Oh boy, eh? I'd like to. I always like to play a professional sport. I was always like a football guy. I don't know if I was a currently maybe Josh Allen. I was gonna say something yeah. for the Buffalo Bills. Maybe maybe get Josh <laughs> Allen a day off. Yeah. Eh? Um, if you had to delete all but three apps from your smartphone, which three would you keep? Uh. Well, I'm kind of hung up on social media, so I, I probably keep, I, I only keep on to uh, Facebook. I'm an Instagram guy, and uh, but I'll actually score mobile. I, I'm a, I like to watch my score mobile too. Okay, all right. <laughs> and just lastly, if you, <laughs> this is a stupid one. If you were a vegetable, which one would you be? Oh boy, eh? That's like uh, back in the old interview days. I, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe uh, broccoli. It starts, starts nice and strong in the stem, and then it grows up, uh, uh, Nice and uh, flourishes around the top. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I love it. I love yeah, yeah. it for a very silly question. You give a very good answer. Yeah. So I really, really appreciate that. Well, uh, let's talk a little. That was the end of the rapid fire round, oh, cool. by the way. But um, thinking specifically about Stevensville and some of the development that's happened here in the past few years, um, what do you see as kind of being next for Stevensville? Where is Stevensville in the next five years? 
I don't know really uh, like uh, I think uh, I think there's constant growth like there's all kinds of growth around the area so we're definitely seeing new people every day I see like uh, every day I open my door I see a bunch of new people that walk through my door and say they just moved here in the last week last month last year uh, and uh, and people seem to love it uh, uh, they come in whether they have to commute back out or whatever but the Stevensville area is pretty easy for commute because uh, you're pretty much centrally located in the region kind of you're not too far away uh, but uh, yeah a lot of people are coming from the cities and stuff I noticed uh, coming to maybe retire in this area or whatever they're doing but uh, but yeah we see all kinds of new faces all every day so this place is always changing always getting better in my opinion uh, we did uh, get our second traffic light in town that's big news that was, you know that's all right so yeah we're, we're a two light town now do you find now when you leave this area and you go to say st Catharines, it feels like a really big city by comparison you're like yeah, there's so many traffic lights here totally right yeah <laughs> even yeah, yeah. it's even get hard to get used to the one that we uh, we just put in there <laughs> i've noticed uh some people uh where, right when it first went in uh people were stopping as a four-way stop still and uh yeah it's a small town mentality we're just not quite there yet it's just the way it goes yeah <laughs> okay well i really want to thank you for your time Sheldon, thank, thank you for you. being on the show. I'm going to make sure to uh, put links to everything Shaggy's is up to here below the episode in the awesome. show notes, but uh, I really appreciate your time today. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Welcome back, everyone. I am excited to announce that Mrs. Eugenia Mooney and Mr. Michael Fury of Mrs. Mooney's Halfpenny Dreadfuls are back for season three with more editions of This Month in Fort Erie History, presented by HalfpennyDreadfuls.com. October 15th, 1814. The only Royal Navy ship of the line to be launched and operated entirely in freshwater, HMS St. Lawrence, a 194-foot, 112-gun, first-rate wooden warship with a crew of 700, served on Lake Ontario during the War of 1812. Three other ships were stripped of their guns to accommodate this behemoth. Patrolling Lake Ontario between Hamilton and Niagara-on-the-Lake stopped all attempts by the Americans to continue their hold on Fort Erie after the siege and capture that previous August. Major General Izzard and the 2nd Artillery Regiment who were stationed in the area were cut off from much-needed supplies and so abandoned the fort and the region in favor of Sackett's Harbor, New York. HMS St. Lawrence finished the war, having never gone into battle. I just love those, don't you? Uh, to wrap up today's episode, let's talk about some upcoming community uh, events. As a quick reminder, please, everybody, be safe out there. Community events still need to observe certain social distancing protocols and so forth. Okay, first and foremost, coming up this Thursday, October the 15th at 7 p.m., three-on-three lacrosse night is happening at the Crystal Ridge Community Center. Uh, on Friday evening at 8 p.m., that's Friday, October 16th, live at Sessions hosted by Sessions on the River, of course. Uh, you can catch Chris Curry, which I believe is going to be a Facebook Live, an online event, uh, and you can purchase access for $2.99 to that live performance. Also happening the evening of Friday, October 16th, is karaoke at the Bell Tower Community Arts and Entertainment Complex. That kicks off at 9 p.m., always a good time. In case you needed a quick reminder, the Ridgeway Farmer's Market is still happening every Saturday morning. So catch it this Saturday, October 17th, at uh, starting at 8 o'clock a.m. And then also happening in Ridgeway on Saturday morning, beginning at 11 a.m. at Lakeside Book, uh, Books and Arts, is a kids art and craft class or classes. Uh, runs from 11 a.m. until 12.30 p.m., uh, also happening in Ridgeway on Saturday, uh, starting Saturday morning at 11 a.m., J. Carroll Photography is offering a fall photo shoot. And this event, like all events, you can get more details from the show notes below this episode if that sounds like something you would like to participate in. Well, I guess that's all for now, folks. It looks like we've got Season 3, Episode 1 in the bag. Join me next week, Tuesday, October 20th, for Season 3, Episode 2. My guest will be Jen Wilkinson of 335 on the Ridge and the Kitchen at 335 in Ridgeway. So long, everybody. Stay safe out there. You've been listening to the Fort Erie Podcast with your host, Brent Jones, a sales representative with REMAX Niagara Realty Limited Brokerage. Follow at Buy with Brent on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for updates. Subscribe to the Fort Erie Podcast on popular platforms like Apple Podcasts and Spotify and catch a new bite-sized episode every week. Until next time.